All right, dudes and dudettes, welcome back to another episode of In 10 Minutes with your boy Super Turtle here. Guys, today we're going to be going over the basics of mechanism and how it applies to your modded Minecraft worlds. I hope you all enjoy. So mechanism is known for quite a few things, uh, mainly being the five times ore production. You can turn one ore into five ingots, and uh, also the atomic disassembler. Uh, but there's quite a few more, including you know just basic ore duplication and a few awesome uh, armor and tools options. So we're going to take a look into those. All right, so to start off mechanism, you're going to want to go ahead and make their metallurgic infuser. Uh, these guys are pretty easy to go ahead and craft. If you look up metallurgic infuser, you should see the recipe here and just enough items. If your mod pack does not have this, I would highly recommend adding it in because it will give you the recipe in order to craft it in. Uh, os osmium is the ore uh, from mechanism. Uh, you can smelt it up into ingots and you can even cr crush it into dust. Uh, but this is definitely the first machine that you're going to want to go ahead and get. Once you have the metallurgic infuser crafted, uh, you'll open up the GUI and it'll look something like this. Uh, over here on the side is where you put in your infusing type. If we put redstone over here, as you can see, it starts to fill it up. Now, I do highly recommend if you want to get into mechanism, starting out with a bunch of redstone, iron, and osmium. As you see here, we can go ahead and put an iron ingot in here, and this will get us an infused alloy. All right, here's our infused alloy, and then if we put osmium in here... We will get the basic control circuit. Now these two items are essential for continuing on with mechanism. All right guys, now I recommend the first machine you make after the metallurgic infusers is an enrichment chamber. Uh, if you see here, uh, this is the GUI that you'll go into. You're gonna go ahead and take your redstone dust, put it in here, and then you'll wait for it to be done. Once that is finished, you'll get a thing called the Enriched Redstone. This also works for diamonds as well. We'll go ahead and get those started. If we come over here to the Metallurgic Infuser, we'll put one redstone in, so now we're at 620. If we put one more in, we're at 630. Uh, but if we put one of these Enriched Redstone in here, as you can see, we're at 710, so it is much more bang for your buck to go ahead and make the Enriched stuff. All right, and this is what the uh, diamonds in the enrichment chamber gives you, is the enriched diamonds. These are essential for the mod. You'll put these, kind of this uh, similar thing, into the metallurgic infuser. Now, you will probably need a separate metallurgic infuser to go ahead and do this, but this will allow you to basically upgrade the infused alloy that you have and make a reinforced alloy. This is essential for upgrading your machines to higher tiers. All right, so there are two ways to go ahead and upgrade your machines here. If you right click the metallurgic infuser, you can see that if you craft it like this, you put the basic control circuits here, you can upgrade it up to the next tier if you hit uses on that. Um, by right clicking uh, you'll get the advanced control circuit and then the infused alloy or you can go ahead and create these uh, installers uh, so this is basically just the same thing right uh, but it doesn't require you to break the machine and uh, you know place it into the crafting table you just need a piece of wood uh, same for the next tier up the next tier after that and then the final tier which is the ultimate tier so to install these onto a machine, you're just going to shift or right click. As you can see, that one worked, so we can upgrade these guys. The advanced tier, we can just shift and right click. Elite tier, and then the ultimate tier. Now, these guys have been upgraded to have several more slots and even more room in here for redstone so that these can infuse much more items for you. So that was the metallurgic infuser and the enrichment chamber mechanism has many more machines, including the precision sawmill that will allow you to turn wood into dust. It's actually best if you use oak logs for this. You'll get the sawdust, which is essential for the next step we need. All right. So with a total of four sawdust collected here, we can go ahead and craft this up into a cardboard box, which is amazing. All right, so the cardboard box is essential for, say, if you want to move a block, you just right-click it, you'll break it with your pickaxe, and then once you place it back down again, you'll just shift right click and that will give you the the block back wherever you want it this does work on spawners so it's great for setting up an early uh, mob spawner system the precision sawmill can also be upgraded into the four tiers moving away from the precision sawmill we have the smelting factories or the energized smelters these again can be upgraded into the four tiers and just act like a much better smelter where you can smelt multiple things at one time 
Then we have the Crusher that will act very similar to a Macerator, if you don't know what that is. Uh, it's essentially a block that will take one ore and crush it into two dust. So this will optimally double the item output of, it, say, an ore, breaks it into dust so that you can smelt each dust up into their own ingot. The Crusher can also be upgraded by the four tiers. So next is the Rotary Condenser. This turns water into steam. This is great for turning dirt into clay and also if you put it into injection chamber this is where you turn it in from water or dirt to clay and you can also put in concrete powder and it will turn it into uh, concrete for you and to grab the water uh, you're going to go ahead and make an electric pump uh, all you need to do is just supply it with power uh, we have a creative energy cube here we'll go over power generation in a few moments uh, but the electric pump is connected to it it pumps water out and all you need to do is put the uh, fluid pipes above this and pump it right into that and then you'll pump water into here and this will separate it into hydrogen and oxygen which you can put the hydrogen into your jetpack i will go ahead and demonstrate that now for you so as you can see, the water is being pumped into the electrolytic separator, splitting into hydrogen and into oxygen. And this will bring us into our next segment, the tools and armor. So we're going to go ahead and grab this jetpack here. As you can see, we have all of this hydrogen set here. Sorry, we need to put it down here. And as you can see, it will slowly start to fill that up. Now, I highly recommend you set this to dump the axis. So when this fills up, uh, it will go ahead and just dump this stuff. And then this will continue to put hydrogen into your jetpack. And for the free runners, these negate all damage and give you step assist so that you'll be able to just run up a single block. Uh, you want to go ahead and equip these and then step on a charge pad. Now the charge pad's super easy to craft. All you need is some polished blackstone pressure plates, steel, and energy and an energy tablet. All right, and as you can see, we have a little bit of hydrogen in our jetpack. If we go like that, we are now wearing it. Pay no attention to these guys here. And as you can see, when I switch myself over to survival mode, the jetpack works like a dream. And the free runners, for the cost of some energy quite a bit actually, will go ahead and stop me from taking damage. All right, time for the one of the most coolest items in Mechanism, arguably one of the best looking tools in any mod, the Atomic Disassembler. Now, to make this guy, all you're going to need to do is make some refined obsidian and an atomic alloy, and you'll be able to craft it up. It's not very hard to make, and it, it is amazing. So go over here and get this bad boy charged up. Now, if we hit the little GUI, which for me is the up arrow I've set, you can see we have a few different modes here. Fast is for stupid, fast mining, insta mine pretty much. We have vein mining and extended vein mining, so you can go and use vein miner on this, basically. So as you can see, it mines pretty quick. It even mines the bedrock. Just kidding, no, it doesn't. All right, so now is the method of transporting energy, items, heat liquids, etc. Uh, so we have our basic universal cable here, amazing, transports power. Uh, we have our mechanical pipe, which transports fluids. We have a pressurized tube that transports gases like hydrogen and oxygen over there that we have in our electrolytic separator. We have basic logical transporter. This is for items. And then the basic thermodynamic conductor, which is for heat for when you get further into the mod pack. All right, guys, next is power generation in mechanism. I highly recommend the windmill, the wind generator here here uh, now this thing is very special it really depends on where you build it in the world as you can see I have quite a few of these guys here uh, these are only producing 24 fe per tick you know uh, combined it's a total of 480 fe per tick but if we look up in the sky as you can see there's a little dot up there all right, and this guy is all the way up here at Y level 251. Now, the reason it's not a 256 is, yet, as you can see, this guy's pretty tall, and it will not allow you to place it any higher than this, but this guy's generating 192 FE all by itself. So if we have four of these guys up here at level Y251, we're outperforming all of those guys down here, and I believe we have about 16 of them. So I'd highly recommend building these up as high as you can. And the reason I like the windmills so much is because all you have to do is just set them and forget them. They continue to generate you power the whole time that they are up and running. You don't have to, you know, fix these guys every once in a while. You just set these guys down, and you just pretty much forget about them. So again, better to build them up way up in the sky because they'll produce much more power for you. All right, and besides the windmills here, we have two different types of solar panels, solar generators so these guys here 
uh, produce 17 FE per tick when it is new. Now, I do have Daylight Cycle off, so they're going to be producing all the time. And then you have their big brother, the Advanced Solar Generators, that produce a whopping 105 FE per tick during the, the daytime. Um, so as you can see here, just got these guys sorted up. So as you can see, we have a whole bunch of these guys here, the little solar guys. They're only producing... Uh, 140 FE per tick. We have three of the big guys, and we're producing 316 FE per tick. So these guys are definitely what you want to build, uh, but I would actually suggest that after the windmills. Because again, these only work during the day, and these work all the time. And if you move them up into the sky, yeah, you get a bunch of power. All right, so this has been Mechanism Within 10 Minutes, not including the intro and the outro. Guys, again, this tutorial is for the people who are not familiar with the mod. Uh, this is just to get them their feet wet, you know, get them into the mod, know how it works, how the, the basics. I do want you guys to continue to explore. I don't want to tell you guys exactly how to do everything. So I hope you guys do enjoy. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, please make sure to subscribe. Anyways, it's been Super Turtle. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care. Peace out. Bye-bye.